Okay, so the next question is what is the difference between Git and GitHub? So as we have already seen, Git is a version control system of distributed and the working tree, etc. Whereas Git status shows you the difference between the working directory and the index. Git status is helpful in understanding Git a bit more comprehensively. Git diff is similar to Git status. The only difference is that it shows the differences between the various commits and also between the working directory and the index. The next question is mention the differences between the Git clone and Git remote. So Git remote creates an entry into your Git config that specifies a name for a particular UI convenience. Synchronization will be done by sub Git. So the next question is what is the difference between Git pull and Git fetch? Git pull command pulls new changes or commits from a particular branch from your central repository and updates your target branch in your local repository. Whereas Git fetch is used for the same purpose, but it works in a slightly different way. When you perform a Git fetch, it pulls all new commits from the desired branch and stores it in a new branch in your local repository. If you want to reflect these changes in your target branch, Git fetch must be followed with a Git merge. So in this case, your target branch will only be updated after merging the target branch and the fetched branch. So just to make it very simple for you, there's one equation that you must remember. So git pull equal to git fetch plus git are performed. Only when everything's been thoroughly checked and fixed, it can be merged into the master. Here there's one more branch called feature branch. So each new feature should reside in its own branch which can be pushed to develop branch as their parent one. So the next question is explain the difference between the head working tree and index. So guys, you can refer the diagram that is on your slide for clear understanding. The working tree or the working directory or the workspace is the directory of source files that you're able to see and edit. So the index or the staging area is a single large binary file which lists all the files in the current branch. Their SHA one checksums timestamps and the file name. It is not another directory which contains a copy of files within it. Whereas head is used to refer to the last commit in the currently checked out branch. So the next question is what is the difference between fork branch and clone? A fork is a copy of a repository. Normally you fork a repository so that you're able to freely experiment with changes without affecting the original project. Most commonly folks are either used to propose changes to someone else's project or to use someone else's project as a starting point of your own idea. Git cloning means pointing to an existing repository and make a copy of that repository in a new directory at some other location. The original repository can be located on the local file system or on the remote machine accessible supported protocols. The git clone command is used to create a copy of an existing git repository. In very simple word, Git branches are individual projects within a Git repository. Different branches within a Git repository can have completely different files and folders, or it could have everything the same except for some lines of code in a particular file. The next question is what are the different ways by which you can refer to a commit? So in Git, each commit has a unique hash. These hashes are used to identify the corresponding commits in various scenarios. For example, while trying to check out a particular state of a code using the git checkout hash command. Along with this, git maintains a number of aliases to certain commits known as the refs. Also, every tag that is created in this repository effectively becomes a ref, and that is exactly why you can use tags instead of committing hashes in various git commands. So Git also maintains a number of special aliases that are changed based on the state of the repository. So in Git commits are allowed to be referred to as relative to one another. In case of merge commits where the commit has two parents, the raise to sign can be used to select one of the two parents. However, these can also be used to refer to commits that reside on remote branches, allowing one to control and manipulate them from the local Git environment. The next question is what is the difference between rebasing and merging? So in Git, the rebase command is used to integrate changes from one branch into another. It is an alternative to the merge command. The difference between rebasing and merging is that rebase rewrites the commit history in order to produce a straight linear succession of commits. Merging is Git's way of putting a forked history back together again. 
the git merge command helps you take the independent lines of development created by git branch and integrate them into a single branch the next question is mention the difference between revert and reset so reset is used to return the entire working tree to the last committed state this will scrap commits in a private branch or throw away uncommitted changes reset changes which commit a branch head is currently pointing at it alters the existing commit history so this command can also be used to unstage a file whereas get revert command creates a new commit that undergoes the changes from a previous commit so this command adds new history to the project it doesn't modify the existing history now we will talk about the advanced level of interview questions so the question here is how to squash last n commits into a single commit so there are two options to squash last n commits into a single commit and you should mention both of these options while answering such questions so in the first option if you want to write the new commit message from scratch you should use the following command as you can see here on the screen git reset soft head and git commit and in the second option if you want to start editing the new commit message with a concatenation of the existing commit messages then you need to extract those messages and pass them to git commit and for this purpose you will use the command git reset soft head and this command git commit edit hyphen m and the entire log command git log format reverse and the name of the head the next question is what is git bisect how can you use it to determine the source of a bug so git bisect is used to find the commit that introduced a bug by using a binary search so the command for git bisect is pretty simple as you can see on this slide git bisect subcommand and the options this command uses a binary search algorithm to find out which commit in your project's history introduced a bug you can use it by first telling it a bad commit that is known to contain a bug and a good commit that is known to be before the bug was introduced then git bisect picks the commit between these two endpoints and asks you whether the selected commit is good or bad so it continues narrowing down the range until it finds the exact commit that introduced the change so the next question is how do you integrate git with jenkins so as you can see on this slide these are the four steps that you can follow to integrate git with jenkins and i'm also going to show you the screenshots for these four steps so for anyone who's aware of jenkins or has used jenkins you must be aware of this home page or the jenkins dashboard so here you need to click on manage jenkins and once you click on manage jenkins you'll find this option here the manage plugins option click on that and then you will have to search for the plugin here as you can see in this screenshot click on this plugin and here you have these two options install without restart download now and install after restart so you can choose any one of them and once you are done with that here you will be able to see this plugin that we have just downloaded along with its version number so these are the steps that you must follow to integrate git with jenkins so the next question is how do you configure a repository to run code sanity checking tools right before making commits so here you must first mention what exactly is sanity checking a sanity or a smoke test determines whether it is possible and reasonable to continue testing and now you must explain how do you achieve this so this can be done with a simple script related to the pre-commit hook of the repository the pre-commit hook is triggered right before a commit is made even before you are required to enter a commit message so in this script one can run other tools such as linters and perform sanity checks on the changes being committed into the repository so as you can see here this is the script that i'm talking about the purpose of the script is that it checks to see if any dot go file that is about to be committed needs to be passed through the standard go source code formatting tool by exiting with a non zero status the script effectively prevents the commit from being applied to the repository the next question is what is git cherry pick the command git cherry pick is normally used to introduce a particular commit from one branch within a repository onto a different branch another common use of this command is to forward or backport commits from a maintenance branch to a development branch this is in contrast with the other ways such as merge and rebase which normally apply many commits onto the another branch so the syntax for this command is very simple you just need to type git space cherry hyphen pick space the commit hash the next question is what is get reflog the reflog command keeps a track of every single change made in the references that is the branches or the tags of a repository and keeps a log history of the branches and the tags that were either created locally or checked out 
reference logs such as the commit snapshot of when the branch was created or cloned checked out renamed or any commits made on the branch are maintained by git and listed by the ref log command so this command must be executed in the repository that has the lost branch so if you consider the remote repository situation then you have to execute the ref log command on the developer's machine who had the branch so the next question is how to recover a deleted branch using the git ref log command so here as you can see on the screen these are the three steps that you must follow to recover a deleted branch and i'm also going to show you the screenshots okay so in the first step you get the history logs of all the references for that you just need to type git ref log and once you type this command you can see the history log in the second step you need to identify the timestamp of the branch that you want to recover so here in this case this is the timestamp that we are looking for the pre prod branch here in the third step you just need to use the command git checkout hyphen b and the branch name this is a pointer reference when the pre prod branch was created so if you follow these three steps you will be able to recover the deleted branch so the last question of this session that is mention some of the git ref log sub commands so as you can see on the screen these are the commands that we will talk about four to five commands the first command is git ref log help so this command is used to open up the manual page the second command is the git ref log show so this command shows the logs of the references provided in the command line the third command is the git ref log expire so this command is used to prune the older ref log entries the fourth command is the git ref log delete so as the name suggests this command deletes single entries from the ref log history and the fifth command is git ref log exists so this command checks whether a reference that is a branch or a tag has a ref log log history entries so these were a few commands like git ref log sub commands that you can answer in this question so with this we have come to the end of this session i hope you have enjoyed this session if you have any queries related to this session you can post them in the comment box below and we will try to get back to you as early as possible till then happy learning thank you